Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make some homemade beef empanadas, also called meat pies. These are so delicious. They're flaky on the outside and has this very moist beef filling on the inside. I'm also gonna be showing you a quick way, just in case you're just lazy, but you still wanna enjoy some beef empanadas. So let's get into today's video. <music> Welcome back friends. So we're gonna start off with our filling. So this is my skillet right here. And here I have one pound of ground beef. Now I did not go for lean meat because I need that fat. You guys know fat is flavor, okay? So if you find out that you have enough fat, you can later um, take it out. But for me, this was just perfect. And you might notice that I did not add any oil at all to my skillet and that's because there is already enough fat in this meat so I'm just gonna let it render its own fat and cook in its own fat and juices you are gonna be assured of maximum maximum flavor in case you're using lean meat you can just go ahead and add a little bit of oil in your skillet now as you can see my meat is beginning to um, brown and turn and it's just cooking nicely and you can see the fat that rendered all from that um, the ground beef that is all I'm using to cook. You do not need to consume so much fat. So this was just enough. That's why I did not add any um, vegetable oil. Now I'm going to go ahead and add um, half of an onion. This is just regular yellow onion. I chopped it up as you can see and I added it there. This adds so much flavor to it and don't worry it's not going to be crunchy or anything like that. To my non-onion lovers this is going to cook down and you will barely be able to see it but it would add so much flavor to it. So yeah, just go ahead and toss that. A uh, goal is to brown this meat nicely. So I'm just cooking on um, medium heat right now. So to spice it up, I'm gonna be using some freshly crushed garlic. I just crushed this in my mortar and pestle and this is what it looks like. And I'm adding a good tablespoon, yes. You can use less, but I like garlic and garlic just brings out the taste in meats and most um, cooked food. So I like to add in my garlic right here. I'm also going to be hitting it up with some ground black pepper. Also went in with, with my noir chicken bouillon and also some salt. Yeah, go ahead and mix that up. Just add a little bit and you can um, adjust all your spices at the end. If you want a little kick, you can go ahead and chop up a little bit of chili peppers in there. It's, it's so, so delicious. That kick is so, so good. But again, that's optional. Now you can see me adding a splash of water. I just want to deglaze the pan. You see that um, brown stuff on the bottom? That's flavor right there. We do not want to waste it. So splashing a little bit there will deglaze the pan and just add so much flavor. Yeah, so just go ahead and cook this on um, low medium heat. I will then go in and add some crushed rosemary. You guys know rosemary brings out so much flavor in meat and I just added a little tiny bit of that. And y'all, the fragrance, the aroma was so, so good. So yeah, I'm gonna continue to cook this on low heat. And I know y'all be like, okay, man, so where's the veggies? Don't worry, girl, I got you. Okay, so um, on the side, I have um, water boiling and there I'm gonna try to cook these um, chopped carrots and potatoes. I, as you can see, this is the size that I want. These are tiny cube sizes. Now the goal is just to cook this like halfway, okay? Remember this still has to go into the filling and the pies are gonna be baked. So you do not wanna overcook it. So I just cook this um, with a little bit of salt for about three minutes and that is it. I strained it and I just let it sit. If you want to stop the cooking process, go ahead and rinse it off with cold water and that would actually stop the cooking process. So that's what I did and I just uh, put it on the side. And now I am gonna make a thickener for my, um, for my filling. Here I have some water and I'm going in with some all purpose flour. The purpose of using this thickener is to act as a binder, okay? So you know ground beef can be crumbly and all of that. You do not want to open your pie and the, the pieces of um, ground beef start falling off. This is gonna act as a binder to bring everything together and add so much moisture. Trust me on that one. All the ingredients will be listed below in the description box. Now as you can see, my meat is browning and it is so looking so, so beautiful. I am gonna hit it up with some chopped green bell peppers. Y'all, let me tell you, 
if you're gonna skip anything do not skip on this one there's just so much flavor and just the color look at that the pop of color is just so beautiful added to this browned beef um ground beef right now absolutely divine so yeah go ahead and cook that let the peppers cook down for at least a minute or two and then i am gonna go in with my um flour mixture like I said, this will thicken it up and bring everything together. Now, I actually needed more water, so I went in and splashed in a little bit more water. And again, I try to measure this. I've done this so many times, so I don't measure, but I try to measure this so you guys can actually read, can actually try it and enjoy it at home. Now that my um, filling is pretty much cooked, I went in and reintroduced the cooked um, potatoes and carrots and y'all can you see this filling you can go ahead and add some um red bell peppers finely chopped with the green bell peppers if you want but i already had the i already had the carrot so i most of the time i don't add it but you can add it it's not gonna hurt at all if nothing it's gonna add extra layer of flavor so yeah that is it now i am just simmering on very very low heat because technically we are done and as you can see I don't even have excess fat to, to, to remove, so it was just perfect. But again, if you have excess fat, please try and do that once the beef is browned, okay? Now, I'm going to let my filling cool down to room temperature, and we're going to start off with our pastry, okay? So now, of course, you guys know, I am using Kerrygold salted butter. You can also use unsalted butter because I'm going to hit it up with some salt anyway. Now, you want this butter to be really cold, so I just got it out of the refrigerator and cut it into small cubes, as you can see. Now, to make my dough and make it really, really easy, I am going in with my food processor and it comes with a dough attachment. This has made my life so easy because my husband enjoys this and it just makes it so easy because going in with your hands, it, it can be really, <laughs> man, it, it hurts sometimes. It's just a little too much. So I added four cups of flour in there and I'm going in with some salt. So remember, I'm using salted butter, so I'm cutting down a little bit on my salt, but if you're using unsalted butter by all means you can add more salt so yeah there goes in my um butter my chopped uh, my diced butter actually and i used two and a half sticks of butter with four cups of all-purpose flour once it makes you can see it will look like breadcrumbs that's exactly what you want to see and now i'm going to add in two eggs these eggs act as a binder number one and two it adds more richness and it also contributes to the um the texture and the flavor of um our crust if you know anything about crust you would know that now here i'm i am adding ice cold water it has to be ice cold going in with the cold butter that is what is going to give you the flakiness that is the trick to good flaky crust you want to use cold ingredients this is not a cake with cakes you want um, room temperature ingredients, right? But with pie crust, you want cold ingredients for that flakiness that you want. So yeah, I added in some water and as you can see, it is already forming into a beautiful dough. I could smell the butter and here it is. Now I am using the silicone mat. This I got from Amazon. It's, I think it's in my storefront, but I would list, link, my storefront is always linked in my description box. This is perfect for pastry. Now I am going in and just um, bringing out my dough. It is so soft. As you can see, I don't even need to knead this, really. You don't need to go in and knead at all. I'm just trying to form it together into a ball. And what you want to do right now is let it rest, okay? You've been working the dough. You want to let it rest, okay? Now, I am just going ahead and wrap it up with some um, plastic wrap and let it sit. Now, I leave mine in the refrigerator because, remember, the butter was cold, but because we've been bidding it in the food processor, it kind of got warm. So I'm going to put it in the refrigerator to sit um, for at least 15 to 30 minutes. Now, this is it. This was 30 minutes before. And as you can see, it is nice and shiny. I am going in with my dough cutter just to separate the dough into smaller pieces and make it easier to work with. You also notice that I have um, floured the surface of my silicone mat just to make it nonstick and easier to work with that um, the dough. Y'all, that is it. I'm going to go ahead and um, add more flour to it. And then, of course, going in with my rolling pin, I like to also dust it with some flour just so it doesn't stick under dough at all. Okay? And just go ahead and um, 
take the small pieces. I like to work on um, smaller chunks because it's easier to knead. You don't have to overwork yourself or the batter. So once you knead it, now y'all, I could not find my um, batter cutter. So I am using <laughs> the lid of a pan, ghetto. But hey, you guess what? It is a good old trick and it works perfect. So now once I get the right um, size for the circle, I am going in with my cool filling. You want this to be absolutely cool. You want it to be room temperature. Now guys, if you can see those um, red bits, I went ahead and added some red bell peppers at the end because I had it, so why not? Now going in with some water. I'm just going in with my finger and just going around the edges with a little bit of water. This is to act as a binder and adhesive for the sides of the pie that way once it's cooking once it's baking it's not gonna open up in the oven so just go ahead and silly i just formed it into a semicircle and pressed it down gently and then i will go in with a fork again to press it down this seals it even further and second it also adds this beautiful just pattern that i love so so much i am going to also vent it so that once the pie is cooking it can vent out and not open up this is what it looks like and so simple, so easy. Now I am going to put it on a parchment paper on a baking tray. That way it would come out nicely and nonstick. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process. Roll out the dough, cut the, um, the circle that I need. Mind you, if you want smaller pies, you have to use a smaller tool to cut out the circle, right? But just make sure you're able to put the filling and also able to close it and seal it properly. So yeah, I just went in and worked on the rest of the dough and the filling. And once I'm done, this is what it looks like so far. I had to do two batches, so this is the first batch. Now, I'm going to have to do an egg wash for it. I used one egg. And just bit it really nicely and went in with a silicone brush and just brushed the entire surface of these pies. This is going to act as a glaze. Once you glaze this with this egg wash and it hits that oven, it's going to form that beautiful golden brown crust that you like. Now, if you do not glaze it, it's still going to cook, but it's going to be this pale brown. I like my pies to be golden brown. And it just looks more appetizing and just so beautiful. So now, these are my glazed pies. I'm going to put it in the oven. It's already preheated at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I am baking this for um, 25 to 28 minutes. Checking at the 25-minute mark. In the meantime, I had some leftover fillings. So I want to show you another quick method. Now, if you don't have time to do your homemade um, pastry use this flour tortillas this is the medium size put in the filling now to close this you have to make a thick flour paste okay you can just use regular water because it would not hold the tortilla together so that is my thick flour paste and i'm just going and rubbing that on the side just like i did with the water um just like i did with the water and the homemade pastry dough just do the same thing and go ahead and seal now you do not need a fork for this you just need to press down more firmly on this one so as you can see i pressed it down and then i picked it up and just pinched everything together and with the flour mixture it's not going to come out now with this recipe you have to fry it unfortunately you cannot bake this one it's not going to come out right it's going to be just bad so you want to fry this on low medium heat remember the tortilla is already cooked this is just to give it some color now flip it on the other side and let it cook. I cook mine for about four minutes and that's it because everything else is cooked. The filling is cooked, the tortilla is already cooked and this is what it looks like. Now y'all, this right here is good when it's fresh out of the grease. Girl, it is so crunchy, so good and it does not absorb oil. I just put it on um, a clean paper towel so it can absorb any oil left on it and that is it. So simple, so easy. Now, our baked pies are out of the oven, and can you guys see? Do you see the effect of that egg glaze? It is just absolutely beautiful. The crust that it forms on the top is just everything for me. This is what it looks like. You can see those little cracks on the, on the pie. Now, that's an indication that we did good because that, that's, what, that's that butter that's doing all of that. So this is what it looks like. I let it sit down for about 20 minutes to cool down. And now I'm going to open it so you guys can see. Super flaky outside. And look at the inside. It is still so moist, really, really moist. 
so delicious flavorful my spices were on point for me adjust your own spices to your own liking i would link everything that i use i would list it down below this is what it looks like and y'all i just this heats so nicely now this was the other one that i fried this one also is so so flaky on the outside like i said this is better when it's fresh out of the grease it's so good now this does not reheat really well but i found a way i found it when i put it in my air fryer it reheats really really good so so beautiful you can put these pies in a ziploc bag and save it in your uh, fridge and enjoy it thanks for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one bye